Hello and welcome back to Presenter Media. This is Kara. Today we are focusing on the advanced tutorial of how to create an animated puzzle using an image of your own and our puzzle piece toolkit. In the background, you can see our puzzle piece toolkit. We got rid of all of the extra slides except those which we may need to work from today. And we are using the 4x4 puzzle layout. The first step is to insert the image that you want to be using for this. The reason that we're inserting the image is it's going to allow us to have a side-by-side -side example of what we want it to end up looking like. And so we're going to keep this on the side the whole time so we have a point of reference to be able to go back and forward with. Next, we're going to go ahead and start applying the fill to each of these individual puzzle pieces. Now, when you go to apply a fill, you'll be right-clicking and going to Format Shape. Again, this will either open up the Format Shape pane on the far right-hand side, or it's going to have a pop-up box appear if you're using PowerPoint 2010 or older. We're working in 2013 today, so everything will be popping up in this right-hand pane. We're going to select the Picture Fill. Go ahead and select From File. Locate our Apple. And now, the important part to remember is to select Tile Picture as a Texture and to unselect rotate with shape. This is important because by using rotate with the shape it's going to turn it as these puzzle pieces turn. So the top left corner is what we're going to be starting with. Remember the sizing is not going to be exact so we'll align everything based on the top left and top right corners and have everything else match up inside of those. Now the apple itself Let's go ahead and get rid of this background on it. This will just be a quick way to be able to see what the actual puzzle is going to be able to hold behind it. It's going to be this size. So if we line it up here, the apple will end up dragging off the puzzle. So that tells us we need to be able to have this be slightly sized down. So in those fill options, you do have the ability to use the scale X and scale Y. We're going to go ahead and just reduce this by about 10%, so it's not going to be dramatically smaller, but that 10% will be able to buy us enough space that we can actually start lining everything up. Now I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of the top row set up here and ready to go, and then I'll be right back with you. Alright, so I have the top line set up now, and you can start to see how the apple's going to appear. Something to take a look at is what is called the offset, and that's going to be an X, Y axis, if you remember back to the days of grids and algebra. The top row, since we set everything up to align with the top, should be able to have a Y axis of zero, which means this is set up to what the true top is of the actual image. If you are adjusting the offset of the x-axis, the smaller the number goes, the farther to the left the image will move. If the number goes larger, the image is going to move to the right. I am now going to go ahead and work with the next layer of items. And again, this is going to be this next row down where everything is going to be set by using the picture, unselecting rotate with shape, in this whole selection here, I'm actually going to be focusing on using it from the center or from the individual side. So in this case, we'll have left on the left and right on the right, and the two will be in the center. So I'll be right back after I get that taken care of. Okay, now fast forward about half an hour. As you can see, there are gaps in some of these puzzle pieces, and rather than fight with them the entire time trying to make them all line up consistently, I'm going to go ahead and give them a outline for each item and it's going to be a pretty narrow outline. So we are going to give it a little bit of transparency, not very much, just a little to give it a, lo a little bit more of a shading effect. And now you can see in the background here we do have those pieces with all of their outlines. This is going to get rid of any jagged edges that you may see between the pieces. I'm going to go ahead and move up to our animation pane and get that opened up. Now the next steps that we're going to do, we'll be using various animation entrance effects to be able to bring in all of these puzzle pieces. So we have the zoom, which is a nice one if you're going to be using it for a puzzle piece. It's very easy, it can make it look like each item is coming in as it needs to. If we apply that same effect to all of these items, 
you'll be able to actually have it so each item zooms in. Let's go ahead and play it so you can see how it looks. And you can change the order if you need to. I have now applied that zoom effect to all of the pieces and they all have set to start on click. I am going to go ahead and manually change that to be after previous with no delay just because it's going to take probably six seconds or so for it to go through all the way anyways. And I'm going to go ahead now and open this up in our slideshow so you can take a look at how this shows up. So you can see all these pieces are coming into play now and it looks really great and it's nice to see them. Now you can get even more complex if you want to and you can put an image behind this one. So we're going to go ahead and insert that original apple that we had, reapply the color and send it to the back. You may be wondering why I'm doing this because now you can't see the apple anymore. My reason for this is that we are actually going to make it so you can reveal this apple as you are removing the puzzle in front of it. So now that we have all the pieces coming into play, we are going to give each piece an exit animation along with the trigger. Again, this is going to take us a few minutes to be able to get this done. So bear with me while I get this taken care of, but I'll show you the first couple steps. We're going to go to animations, add an animation, and we're just going to use a fade effect to get rid of these. And on that fade effect, we are going to use a trigger. This is freeform number 13. You can see it down here. So that's what our trigger will be. It will be on click of freeform 13. I'm now going to repeat this process 15 more times and I'll be back with you here momentarily. All right, now it is for the moment of truth, so to speak. You can see on the right hand side, we have a ton of animations. What we started off with is a zoom animation for all of the puzzle pieces and then we have a fade animation for the green apple that is in the background now. Then we have fade out effects for all of the puzzle pieces when they are clicked. This will cause each puzzle piece to disappear revealing the green apple that is behind it. Let's go ahead and play the presentation so you can see how it actually will play out. So by clicking on any of these pieces, you can see we are having the red apple disappear to be replaced with the green apple. And again, the green apple is slightly larger still, so it does have a little bit of an outline that we do need to address if we were to make this into a professional setting. So this is how the puzzle pieces are able to be faded out. To click one more time, and that ends the slide. If you have any questions, you can comment on this video or write to us at support at presentermedia.com. Again, my name is Kara Jones with Presenter Media. Thanks for watching.